from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Dan Donovan. The celebrating of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from three donors. The first are David and Debbie Muse from Bittern Lake, Alberta, in celebration of their 45th wedding anniversary on September the 24th. For the living and deceased members of the Muse and Fontaine families, and in gratitude for the Daily TV Mass. The second is Noreen from Ponoka, Alberta, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the intentions of her family, for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and for the souls in purgatory. The third is an anonymous donor from Kanata, Ontario, for the living and deceased members of the Miranda and Fernandez families, for the abandoned souls in purgatory, and for an end to persecution of priests and religious in Africa and India. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. On this, the day of the funeral, we remember Her Majesty Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, and we offer our prayers for the repose of her soul. On behalf of the Daily TV Mass community, we extend our sincere condolences to the members of the royal family. Generations of Canadians have lived under Queen Elizabeth's long reign. She will be forever remembered for her remarkable service to the people of our country and the entire Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth visited Canada 22 times. On each occasion, Canadians found her in her an example of service, patriotism, respect for humanity, and devotion to God. On this day of great sadness, we do well to reflect on all that is to be learned from the life of Queen Elizabeth II as we offer this prayer for the repose of her soul. Grant her eternal life, O Lord, and may everlasting life, light, shine upon her. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. My child, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come again, tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. Do not plan harm against your neighbor who lives trustingly beside you. Do not quarrel with anyone without cause when no harm has been done to you. Do not envy the violent and do not choose any of their ways. For the perverse are an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the abode of the righteous. Towards the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he shows favor. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the people, No one after lighting a lamp hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not become known and come to light. Then pay attention to how you listen. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they seem to have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Today's first reading is from the book of Proverbs, one of several books in the Old Testament associated with the wisdom tradition of Israel. Wisdom was something that was widely cherished in the ancient world. This was very much the case with Israel, but also with the great civilizations which surrounded it. When I was growing up, Proverbs were still relatively popular. The ones I remember from that time include, a stitch in time saves nine. The early bird gets the worm. Actions speak louder than words better late than never. I'm sure that many of you can recall others. The Proverbs I learned, like those in the Bible, tend to be about everyday life, about one's relationship to and responsibility for others in the family and in the broader community. Proverbs are ordinarily rather brief sayings that have grown up in traditional cultures and that reflect to some degree the experience of individuals as well as of communities. It's not hard to imagine in many such proverbs the kind of things that matter in ordinary, average people's lives in a particular culture. Things that contain lessons for life, lessons which they, their parents, and their forebears learned in the course of their lives. Proverbs can be described as a form of folk wisdom, wisdom about life life in the family as well as life in the broader community. While biblical wisdom tends to be focused on ordinary everyday experiences, it also tries to relate such experiences to moral and religious values, to biblical faith, to the Mosaic law. The highest form of wisdom it seeks is knowledge of God. The opening verses of the book of Proverbs reveal a fundamental conviction of the author of the book, The fear of the Lord, he says, is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. He offers a variation on this saying in a later chapter. The fear of the Lord, he declares, is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Fear in this context does not mean the kind of cringing fear that can overwhelm a person in the face of an immediate and dangerous threat, whether that fear be of a person, the state of one's health, 
or the precarious, precarious nature of the economic situation in which we find ourselves. The fear of which today's text speaks is rooted in a sense of awe and reverence and in a recognition that God is greater than all that exists. It stirs up in us a desire to understand him and his will for us that ultimately is what we are seeking when we embark on the pursuit of wisdom, human and divine wisdom. Today's reading from Proverbs evokes aspects of the kind, that kind of wisdom which many in the biblical tradition were seeking. They are formulated, however, not in positive commands, but as prohibitions. To understand the significance of this, we need to realize that today's reading can only be understood against the background of the preceding verses. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, the teacher proclaims. By understanding, he established the heavens. My child, he adds, do not let these truths escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence, and they will be life for your souls. Then you will walk on your way securely. Given this vision of wisdom and of the positive significance it can have for those who seek it, the author continues by warning us of how wisdom can be lost. My child, he says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. Do not refuse to be prompt and forthcoming in paying your debts. Do not harm your neighbors or quarrel with them. Do not envy the violence nor seek to follow their way of life. If today's reading spells out in some detail what the wise person should and should avoid, the responsorial psalm puts more emphasis on what we ought to do. To the question, O Lord, who may dwell on your holy hill? That is, who may stand before you in your temple? The psalmist answers, those who do what is right and speak the truth from their heart. Those who stand by their oath, even to their hurt. Those who do not take a bribe against the innocent. The Bible, like the broader wisdom tradition, focuses to a large degree on practical down-to-earth wisdom. Wisdom about how to become a mature and responsible person, a good spouse or parent, people who contribute to the well-being of the community of which they are a part. Biblical wisdom goes beyond that tradition to speak of the wisdom of God and of his desire to share it with us. One of the more remarkable features of our culture has been the success in continuing to develop science and technology and to further their impact on our lives. One could evoke any number of areas in which they've transformed our experience from health care, means of travel, to electronic and social media. Even as we have rejoiced in these and other achievements, we recognize that they are far from perfect. Many developments are ambiguous. In addition to all that is positive about them, they have a negative side that challenges us not only to refine our scientific knowledge, but also to foster that wisdom which alone will allow us to use what is being developed in ways that are positive and that will serve the great causes of peace and justice and of a world in which we work together for the common good. Technical knowledge without wisdom is a recipe for disaster. Simply because we're able to do something like develop ever more sophisticated weapons of war is no reason why we should do so. That decision requires wisdom of a human and of a political nature. Wisdom is a deeply human form of knowledge. It involves the heart as well as the mind and is grounded in experience. It grows out of the coming together of those two things, experience and learning from it. Given the focus in our culture on the young, it's not surprising that many tend to disregard the elderly as people who have little to contribute to the life of their families and of our culture. 
We should cherish the elderly and learn from the wisdom which they have accumulated over the course of their lives. Many who encountered Jesus during his public life saw him primarily as a teacher. His, his disciples gradually came to recognize that he was more than a teacher of wisdom. He was wisdom incarnate. The more we try to understand what has been revealed to us in Christ, the more will we grow in that distinctive wisdom that Jesus embodied and that he came to share with us here as with human wisdom experience is essential in this case the experience is of God Christ and the spirit present in our lives and encountered in a special way in prayer let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs for all those in our daily TV Mass community who are dedicated to the care of the sick, that they may receive the grace to continue their ministry of compassion and caring with hope and joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Gracious God, we ask you, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the unity, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.